Coming up on this week's Files TV, we are back in Mid Argyle at Ashfield Farm to visit one of their holdings to hear about how the land and livestock are managed. And we visit Nether Lethane, which uses modern technology, including N2 applied, to increase nitrogen content in the slurry. We are back in Mid Argyle at Dunad, which is one of the holdings belonging to Ashfield Farm, where Kieran and Linda manage the livestock and land for the Foster family. They are constantly aiming to improve sward quality, cattle and sheep health, and biodiversity on the farm. Okay, so we, we run three holdings. The home farm being Ashfield, where we uh, run about 150 acres, uh, where we have our blackies. Here at Danad, we, we run about 500 acres, which the majority of that is, is cut for our silage, for our fodder for, for through the winter. So over at Ashfield at the home farm, we run 150 blackies. Um, they are lambed from the end of March onwards. We run 500 mules over here at Danad. Um, they're brought back to Ashfield at lambing time, so everything's lambed over there where we are pretty much based for the springtime. We run 50 Angus cows crossed with the Angus bull. They're all calved inside at Ashfield as well. In terms of management, it's a game changer having the sheds at Ashfield. So everything is returned to the home farm for calving and lambing. Uh, they're all housed. Uh, sheep are housed five to six weeks before lambing. They're brought back over here when the grass starts to come, hopefully early. And the cows are housed through the winter and then turned out about a month after calving. It's great to give Danad a rest all winter. So there's no poaching of the ground. We might just have some of the hogs over here in the winter time and then everything's sort of filtered back over here in the springtime for the summer and then again taken back to Ashfield when the weather starts to turn a bit. We have got into a, a reseeding programme which we're reseeding about 40 acres a year and in that we try and do 15 to 20 acres of arable silage uh, to stretch out our silage for the year. Uh, the first two years we put on a lot of lime, uh, magnesium, calcium, lime, and it has made a huge difference. So the plan was after five, six years, we potentially will have the majority of Danad all reseeded in young grass. Uh, of that 40 acres a year, we do put in uh, about 15 to 20 acres of arable silage, which is under sown with grass seed, to stretch out our silage and to, well, just more of a maintenance for our cows when we do house them, just to keep them ticking along uh, right up until calving, and then they get onto the silage. So in our reseeding programme, we've, we've, we're trying to get more uh, clover established, to, so we're not using as much fertiliser on, on grazing fields. Since we've improved the land here at Danad, we've been fattening our lambs. It's working quite well. We've got quite a good system going, weighing lambs every week. And um, then Kieran takes a load up to Stirling weekly. It gives us a chance to handle them once a week. And in terms of our calves, we, we're still keeping all our replacement heifers until we get to where we want to be with the cattle numbers. So we keep the, the bullocks until May, June time, and then they go away as forward stores. In the past, we have sold them sort of December time, but we have the facilities at Ashfield now and the feed that we make here over at Danad. We can keep them right through. We're just trying to find a system that works for us and we just go with it. We're open to changing things about sort of every year, try different things, make mistakes, make it better for the next year. But I think it's important to keep trying different things and not just do the same thing every year. We have brought in uh, rotational grazing uh, which we, we find works very well for fattening lambs. Mm -hmm. But in the winter time, things can get pretty wet and you can undo everything you've done in the last year in a very short space of time. Uh, so yeah, rotational grazing in the summertime especially. Yeah, bringing in more clover. Yeah, we, we are like fodder beat and, and, and we, we are keen to try the likes of that to finish our lambs on. And, and, and again, when it's the lambs are all gone, then we can put our yows onto it and, and and uh, get our yows in good form going before lambing time. There's been massive improvements here in the past couple of years, so we are willing to try maybe some barley, um, some oats. Obviously, the, the haulage cost of getting straw up here is quite high, so if we had that as a byproduct and then hopefully sell some of the, the oats or the barley 
to a distillery, that would be amazing, but we'll see what happens. What are the main challenges farming on the west coast of Scotland? The biggest challenge would be our climate, it's very, it's wet. Um, I know this summer, most of the country has had a really good summer. We've actually had quite a wet, a wet summer, um, which made it a bit difficult getting silage in, etc. Fluke is a big challenge to us, but we work really closely with our vet, Alison Barr, and La Gilpid. she keeps us right, and we try, just try and keep on top of that all the time. And feet. And, and the sheep, that's quite a problem mm -hmm. as well, isn't it? But yeah. we just have to, we try and yeah. keep on top of it. And ticks, ticks are another, another major issue. Uh, we do pour on uh, as often as we need to. Yeah, newborn lambs uh, get prone to tick and yeah, it, it's, 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 it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And again, it all goes back to climate as well. We're not getting the cold, cold winters yeah. anymore that's you know, killing off the ticks, they're not lying dormant. There's, we're seeing ticks all year yeah, round now. that's true, that is true. Where, where Denad's situated, we are surrounding a, an ancient monument site and uh, we do get a lot of tourists. We get about 60,000 tourists coming to visit the, the monument each year. And of that 60,000, we get a small percentage that don't obey the, the countryside law. We've had a few dog worrying incidents, nothing major touch wood, but uh, I have the feeling that it's just increasing. Uh, yeah, there, there's, there's an issue there. What are Kieran and Linda doing to encourage biodiversity on the Foster's Holdings? For biodiversity, we have uh, introduced a rotational grazing system, which uh, we do in the summertime or, or for fattening our lambs. So it just means that uh, every shift, the lambs are going on to clean, fresh green grass, trying to get as much daily weight gain as we can. We are also trying to uh, stitch in extra clover into our swords, which is going to reduce our costs in the way of fertilizer. The more clover we can get, the better it is for, for, for our grass swords. As you can see, behind us we, we are in an ideal habitat. We have a lot of wildlife, we have a lot of uh, butterflies. We, we march along the side of a, a triple SI and we have a lot of deer coming in. Uh, so it's The neighbours have actually commented on um, how many more hares and deer and just wildlife in general are about Denad now, which <laughs> they're obviously doing something right and they're linking all the grass. On the outskirts of Straven in Lanarkshire lies Nether Lethame Farm. The farm is run by Alex Fleming and his family and has a diverse mix of enterprises, making the most of modern technology. We sell eggs through a vending machine, we sell milk through a vending machine, uh, we have a bottle vending machine that, that they buy the bottle for and as I say reuse it. There's also a vending machine there that has some soft drinks in it as well, so we sell them. Also, we have a snack van. It's open at the weekends and uh, bank holiday Mondays usually. Uh, we sell teas, coffees, cakes, and our own ice cream that we make here on farm. On the hen side, we have 350 hens. We have 22 milking cattle in total. That's including dry ones. We have 19 heifers or in between bulling and in calf heifers that were born in 21, and we have 15 heifer calves from this year that were born in 22, and we've still one or two to calve. The milk for all dairy produce sold comes from the farm's own herd of Jersey cows. We purchased 20 in calf Jersey heifers from Denmark. It was the health status of these was the attraction of bringing them in from Denmark and getting a good even group. We also decided that we wanted to milk them through a robot. Well, for numerous benefits, but for the, the biggest benefit we feel is to the animal, letting it do what it wants, when it wants. Like many businesses branching out to sell direct to the public, there were some initial hurdles to overcome. There's quite a bit involved in getting the certification to sell the milk through the Environmental Health Department of the local council. We do also sell some milk into some cafes and some farm shops to get further certification for that, which we've also now got for the milk. At the outset, we decided that we wanted to be as eco-friendly as possible. With this in mind, Alex has collaborated with Norwegian company N2 Applied. 
It was an advert I noticed in a, I can't remember whether it was a magazine or an advert somewhere on the internet that N2 Applied were looking for partners uh, in a project they were doing. What does the partnership involve and how does the system work? They supply all the machinery, so they've supplied everything, including the, the separator, the tanks, uh, and what you see behind me. We supply the raw material, which is the cattle slurry, and the electricity used. It's all pretty much a contained process. The slurry comes out the, the, the cattle shed, separated into the holding tank, through the machine. Once it's treated, it goes from the machine over to our main storage uh, tower. The N2 applied technology uses electricity to create a plasma arc which splits nitrogen and oxygen molecules from the air that then form nitrogen oxides. These are then absorbed by the slurry. This increases its nitrogen content and reduces losses of ammonia and methane to the atmosphere. What are the main limitations of this system? It uses a lot of electricity. We have looked at the possibility of solar panels. Well, the main benefit is obviously enhancing the product. When we spread it in the field, the, 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 as I say, it's doubled the nitrogen content of it. And a big factor for us is the fact that, that when we are spreading that product, there is no smell. We are fairly close to the town of Straven, and we're asking people to come on site and buy products from us. If we're creating quite a bit of smell, I would understand why they would not be too keen in that. We have not bought any bagged fertiliser. We can definitely go grass with the, with the product, the end product. We are going to be taking a break for the next six weeks, but look out for another 15 episodes starting on the 18th of November. <laughs>